oh, look at my background. Ina Elham Duty Law, Wasala, Wasala, Mala, Wadra, Sulala. I'm sorry, guys, I got my big fat cat in the background. <laughs> that's the cat that's always got something to say. Okay, Sammy, can you wave to the people? Sammy, there he is. Y'all see, he gave slimes. Sammy, give slimes. Sammy, there you go. He gave slimes. You know, I slam alaikum everybody out there in TV land. I know I'm a little bit late getting started here. This is Layla Nasheba with the Sunnah Followers Kids Program. Yay! Let me change my background from Sammy to uh, Sunnah Followers. <laughs> Sammy will probably be joining us. Sammy, you're going to join them a little later? Okay. All right. He'll probably join us a little bit later, but let me uh, change him out of here. <laughs> Hold on. Okay, now that's a little better. <laughs> okay, welcome to the Sunnah Followers Kids Program. And uh, our program consists of three parts now. The first part, well, four parts now. The first part is at 1 p.m. Sister Zarina was here. And what she does is go over reading uh, the Fatiha and the Tashahud and Surahs of the Quran with the kids. They practice their pronunciation of the, of the short sewers with Sister Zarina for an hour. And then I come on like I am now with the Hadith class. For uh, The second phase of our program is the, uh, uh, the Hadiths. And we'll go over the Hadiths. By the way, we're going to be starting a new book. <clears throat> Remember I told you guys that we're going to do. Yeah, that's the one. Y'all see the one that Amalia is holding up? Let me share everybody see I'm Sister Amalia. This is the one that we're going to do for the kids. Remember I told you guys we're going to go back over the one for youth? Well, we switched it to 55 hadiths of, on Islamic behavior. Because since we got so many kids here now, uh, and you guys are older, I want us to go over the Islamic behavior and discipline that we should have as Muslims. Certain behaviors and certain disciplines we should have, you know, with, and, and, and that's by Sheikh Muhammad Saeed Atli too. So that's the book we're gonna start. But but today I'm gonna do one of the hadiths from um, the Islamic youth because I wanna give you guys time to order that book, okay? But that's the, gonna be the book for this class, inshallah. And uh, so that's the second phase uh, of our uh, Sunnah followers uh, program on the weekend for the kids. And then the third phase is uh, the Sira. And we're continuing with the story of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his life and his story. And then now we have added a fourth phase to the Sunnah Followers Kids program on Sundays. And that is Sheikh Muhammad Saeed Atli. He is teaching the kids and the adults how to read the Quran in Arabic. So he's working on, and that class is every day at 4 p.m. Every day. I want the kids here, since everybody's out of school, I want the kids here every day at 4 p.m. for that class. But on Sundays, we'll be streaming it like this as part of the Sunnah Followers Kids program because by the end of the summer and, and the, at the end of these four weeks, we want the children to know how to read. I know my Sunnah followers' kids, most of them have memorized the Quran because their parents have, are teaching them memorization. But we not only want them to memorize, we want them to be able to be literate and read. So that's why we're focusing in on that. So that's the new platform, the new setup uh, on Sundays. But the Arabic class with Sheikh Atli is every day, Sunday through Sunday at 4 p.m. And we want to see all the kids here. And by the way, there's a couple of books you guys can order too uh, for that class. Let me show that to you guys in case you don't have it for the kids here. Uh, let me screen share. Look at my screen. These are the books that you can order for that class that Sheikh Atlee's teaching. He's ordered, it, it'll be Arabic three. Yeah, here it is. Arabic for beginners three. This is the book because this is what he's going to be beginning today. Arabic for beginners. 
and uh, that is it's only a couple of dollars. And that way you can uh, see the letters and the vowels and there's pictures to color and all that to help you remember. And you wanna order the other book too, if you can, which is Arabic book for beginners book two. This is the alphabet. <clears throat> and the good thing about Sheikh Adley's books, these books, he also includes words. He's not only teaching you how to read the Quran in Arabic, but increasing your Arabic vocabulary. You know, different words that begin with those letters you can memorize and use in your everyday uh, lives. So you can also learn to speak Arabic as well. So that's the new setup, you know, for the, the class on Sunday. And so now before we get started, let me uh, introduce the students, the kids, and by the way, a lot of you uh, 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 saw how smart these kids are because not only do these children attend this on Sundays, but they also attend all my lectures. My six o'clock class on how to pray, they're here for that. The class I teach at nine o'clock, they're here for that. So these kids know how to pray. They know the sunnins of the, of the voodoo. They know the pillars of the voodoo. They're the ones that you guys heard answer the questions last week when I gave their parents quizzes their parents didn't know the answers the parents didn't know how to answer so the children came on and i wonder why is it yes if anyone can explain to me how it is that uh my beautiful children they know the answers to all these uh questions and stuff but the parents don't i i, I just can't get it I, I just really just don't get it I, but anyway, they came in and answered all the questions. And mashallah, we had a, a th this is they. So let me get us started by introducing these wonderful children to all of you who are looking. And we have, we begin to start off with the top here. This is Hamza. Y'all know who he related to. This is a, a sister Isra. Isra's a uh, cousin, even though he looked like he could be her son. Salam alaikum, Hamza. How are you? Why are you looking? Did your, did your mom time you out today or something? No. Why? You I was just at the park for three. You did what? I was at the park for three hours. I can see you got a little suntan. Did you put some um uh sun or sun sunscreen on? No. Well, you need to start wearing sunscreen. Because I can see you got a tan, and you know that sun is not healthy. So you need to put some sunscreen on when you go outside to play, especially how it is. I had three soccer games yesterday. We won all of them. I scored three. Mashallah, you won all three of your games? Well, that's good. You're going to grow up and be a little soccer player, huh? Well, that's good, but you still need that sunscreen. Because I'm telling you, that sunscreen, if you don't wear it while you're young, you're going to pay the price when you're old. Because you're going to have all these old age spots and, and stuff all over your body. And it ain't attractive. He's so handsome. That's Hamza. Hamza. And who else we have joining us? Y'all know who these kids are. These are Faiza's little niece and nephew. There's Lene. Salam alaikum, Lene. And there's Ahmed. Oh my God. Aren't they adorable? Yeah, they somebody here on TV land just typed, are they cousins? Yeah, because no, they're all they got Somali in them. They asked if Hamza and uh the twins were related because they kind of look alike. That's the cheekbones. I told y'all in the curly hair. Them Somalis got that curly hair and them high cheekbones. How are you two doing today? I'm doing good. That's good. So you learning how to read the Quran too? Yeah. That's good. So who's smarter? You uh -huh. or Ahmed? Y'all the same? I know about, about animals and also the waves. Oh, you learned about animals too? Yeah. What what animal? What's your favorite animal? The Komodo dragon and the Hebrew monster. Oh my God, you like Komodo dragons. Those things scare yeah, me. Yeah, if they bite you, you'll, you'll lose your muscle and the, your blood and you'll die. That's because I learned from Kristen Martin and the Komodo dragon bited a buffalo. 
Oh my God. Yes, they paralyze you. That's why I'm scared of those things. I heard they will paralyze you and kill you. Do the same thing. Do they eat you up too? Yeah, and also one of my classmates said they're not scared of anything. Oh, really? They're not? But but uh, but you know what? It's it's oh look at look at Lene. Hey, let me look at her looking like Pfizer mm -hmm. with her glasses off. Oh, you look just like her for real with them glasses off. Your auntie, your auntie spoil you too, don't she? I know she do. I know she do. God, they are both the Pfizer. Those two kids are just, oh, I just want to eat them up. I have got to get to, you know, I'm going to come up there and meet y'all, inshallah. I'm taking a vacation <laughs> soon and I'm debating on coming where your mom lives. I think I'm going to come. I got a nice timeshare there. I think I'm going to come up there because I want to see that part of America. And I get to hold y'all and kiss your fat cheeks, get those Somali cheekbones, oh. and take my fingers and see how that curly hair feel. Will that be okay if I come see you? Yeah. Oh my God, Fresno! I'm in love with these two kids. Mashallah. Well, that's us, Pfizer's niece and nephew. They're with us, and also two of my other favorite. Now I did get to meet these two. And I gave these two a hug, and I already touched those Somali cheekbones on these two. Here we have Asma and Najma. They're the ones that brought me that beautiful uh, uh, um, abaya that y'all like with the, with the bling on it. Yeah, I met them in person. Look at them, beautiful, intelligent, just like their mother. You know their mom's a nurse. Oh, yeah. So we got to tip our hats off to the nurses of America because they're overworked. They getting paid pretty good, though, from what I hear. But they work hard to take care of the sick people. And I heard that that COVID is back on the rise again. So we got to, you know, salute the nurses, you know, because they sacrifice to take care of the people. They sacrifice their own health. And look at how studious and intelligent these two are. You know, their mother, the nurse, she's the only student I have that can look at the sky and tell what prayer it is. Is your mom teaching y'all that too? Yeah. Yeah, because your mother is the only one out of all hundred students I got. Shamza is the only one that can say, Layla, that's Dur. Layla, that's Asr. That's because her parents, you know, are, are originals, old school and taught their children. And now she's teaching hers. Yeah, you don't want to depend on technology. Because the day will come when there won't be no technology. So, mashallah, this is Asma and Najma. Very smart, very respectable kids. They came to my house. They're very well behaved. May Allah bless them. So, they're here with us tonight. Make sure y'all come to Sheikh Atley's class every day at four. Okay, to learn how to read. And also, we have with us, guys, y'all already know, Princess Amalia. She's the one that let me know that it's the 55 books that, that they ordered that I'm supposed to be teaching. And so she's very studious, very smart. She also answered those questions about the pillars of the wudu and the gusel that day. This is Princess Amalia, mashallah. And also we have joining us, uh-oh, she's out of school now. There's Tahira. Assalamu alaikum, Tahira. How are you today? I'm good. Why come your sound is low? Turn your microphone up. Well, she got that thing on her head like her grandmother. Put it on your mouth. There you go. Your grandmother do the same thing. Your grandma do. Now, let me tell y'all a little bit about Tahira. Y'all know that's Fresno's baby. Tahira's in is going to be going to Safa, USA. Her mom's looking into signing her up with uh, Kareem Abu Zaid School, Safa USA, and she needs to go because she's beautiful, she's intelligent, and Muslim kids need to be in a Muslim school. And I like the Safa USA school because it's online. So you can go to school from home, learn about your dean, get your ABCs and EFGs together and not deal with no bullying. So that's Tahira, guys. That's the Fresno baby, inshallah. Y'all see that? <clears throat> and also, this is the smartest of all the kids here. This is Sabrina. 
Sabrina's the one that y'all hear answering the question. She comes to my six o'clock class every day. And she's the one that be getting, uh, when I put the quizzes up, that gives most of the answers. This is Sabrina. Do not confuse her with Sabrine. She is Sabrina, not Sabrine. And mashallah, I love that house that your mother have, that black and white. That's what I'm going to be decorating my office with, inshallah, when my granddaughter moves. Look at that, y'all. It looks just like my brother's house. Look at that black and white. This is what I'm into. You know, open floor plan. Look at the flowers. Oh, my God. Look at that chandelier. Y'all see this beautiful home her parents got? Black and white is the bomb, guys. I'm telling you, for that's the new decor. I was watching um, uh, the show on HGTV, and they were saying that black and white is the new, the new norm now. Everybody wants black and white marble and all of that. You have a beautiful home, and I'm so proud of you, Sabrina. Go ahead, sweetheart. Um, my friend, um, from my school, her name's Bella, and she, from the outside of her house, she covered all the green parts and turned it into white, and then made the parts black. Yeah, that's what they were saying. That that's the new thing now on HGTV, the black and white. All I know is it's beautiful. And that's what I'm getting ready to do to my office. I'm, I already uh, got my furniture and stuff picked out. I'm going to make my, and those same pictures your mom got. I saw them. I'm getting ready. To, I'm, I got them on my wish list. I'm going to make my office black and white. That is just beautiful. Just beautiful. So that's Sabrine, guys. Y'all hear her. That's Sabrina. Y'all hear her answering the questions, you know, in my six o'clock class all the time. And also we have with us another popular dude here. Y'all know him. There's Yusef. Salam alaikum, Yusef. What's up, dude? Hello. You still making them uh them, them prayers with your brother, right? Look at Yusef with them dimples. Y'all see he's getting older. When he was six years old, his cheeks were so big, I wanted to jump through the computer and squeeze them. But he's starting to get a little older now, and his cheeks got dimples in them now, and that little curly hair. Your hair growing back fast, ain't it? Your hair grows pretty fast, Yusef. You gonna be here for Shake Atley's class at uh four o'clock every day, huh? So you can learn to read. Why you look like you sick? You ain't got no cold to do. What's wrong? Did you get your Did you get a whooping or something? He's he's usually talkative. Your mom timed you out, didn't she? <laughs> These kids, he is so adorable. Look at him. You are so adorable. And I saw your brother the other day. Your brother came into the website to give us salams. You know, your older brother. Mashallah. I'm so proud of all of y'all and your sister, Rockmo. You, all of y'all come from a good family. And I just love all of you. And I got to meet y'all one day, too. Alhamdulillah. So that's brother Yusef, guys. And where's his cousin Shuaib? Shuaib in here? There he is. This is his cousin Shuaib. Assalamu alaikum, Shuaib. How are you feeling today? You can tell us. Did Yusef get a whoop in the day? Um, um, uh, no, and um, uh, and um, uh, and um, uh, when he's at my house, he uh, um, uh, and this is his first time. Uh, uh, this is his first time coming to my house. Oh, he's at your house. That's why he's shy. Oh my goodness! And also because um, uh, my mom uh, uh, she's talking to the my sisters, and uh, and they talk real loud. Oh, guys, so see, that's why I knew Yusef wasn't, so he's shy. This is, you know what, guys, shyness is a component of faith. Y'all see why Yusef was so well-behaved? He, he's at his aunt's house. He's being well-behaved, respectable. This is, these are good kids, guys, very good kids. So that's why he was so quiet. So are you- Actually, uh -huh. my mom- my mom and Yusuf are our sister and brother. Oh, really? So your your mother, so he is his, so he's your your um uncle. 
Yusef is your uncle. Can you believe that guy's little six-year-old Yusef is Shuaib's uncle? Mashallah, y'all know Somalis have big families. They get married and have big families. Mashallah, this is what the prophet saw. Been used to be seven years old. He's seven years old now, right? Yeah. Yeah. And me too. And you too. Y'all the same age. That means his, they go, girl, this is the, the sunnah, uh, you know, the, to get married and have big families like this. And I'm so proud of y'all for doing that because it's going to pay off when y'all grown. Whenever you, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that, you know, if you want to live a long life, keep the ties of kinship. And I'm going to tell you why, because life is hard. When you need money to help buy a house or to get a car, you can always call up Yusef and he'll help you. You know, the family is always there to help you. You know, if, if life is getting rough for you, you know, you can talk to Yusef. So this is the good thing about having big families. They help one another. So I'm proud of y'all for that. Yes, yeah, Sister uh, Sabrina, you got something to say? Go ahead. Um, so, um, on Friday, yesterday, we heard your class where the man, where the girl asked a long time ago when you were little and she asked if a man has power over her because the man kept, kept her in from seeing her family and called her family, um, Kaffir and then took her to Saudi Arabia and her dad had to die because of that. I remember that and my dad said that it's, he want, if, if you want a big family, then why don't, you don't see what, um, what's in between a child and their, and, their, and their parents. Exactly, and this is what happens. See, this is why I tell you guys, the sooner follower kids grow up here. And you got and, and you have to teach and instill this stuff in the kids while they're young. So this is what happens when you marry somebody without a guardian. She didn't have no guardian, number one. Okay. And she didn't know the man. All she did knew was that he was from Saudi Arabia. This is why we have to follow the Sunnah of uh, the Prophet. The Prophet said if a girl wants to get married, tell her father. And let your father find you a husband. You don't go looking for your own husband, okay? Because your yeah. father ain't gonna marry you to nobody that doesn't like him. Yeah. So I had a story that was related to that that my mom told me. Oh, she, your mom did. She did. She told you another story. That, so she knows of it happening too, doesn't she? People, because yeah. people are are not following us sooner no more. And this is yeah. what happens. Yeah. So the story went like a girl was a Muslim and she had a couple of sisters and they went to school together. And then there was this boy that kept on coming to her and telling her that um, that he likes her. And she and she asked her one of her friends if it's right if she can go with him. And her one of her friends said, sure, but don't tell your parents. But then she went with him and she left her house without her parents knowing and her parents left and her parents allowed her. So then she stayed in that at, ho at that house and the boy ended up ditching her. Where he locked her in the house with, and and she didn't have no key and then he ran away and then she died in that house. And her parents were sad because they came looking for her and yeah. they found her on the couch. Yeah, see, this is what happens, guys. So you guys need to learn. So you young girls growing up here on this website, y'all know that don't end up in these situations. The Prophet Muhammad made the rules for a reason. The day comes that you want to get married, you go to your father and say, Abu, I'm ready to get married. And let your father and them find you a husband. And in the meantime, you be patient and know that when that whatever, whoever your father find is going to be good, you know. Don't go looking like these young, these other girls are doing today. There's no dating sites. There's no so-called Islamic Muslim match match. We don't do that. You know, that's not the way we go. I'm so proud of you, Sabrina. And I love you so much because you remind me of me. You're so smart and you always hear listening and learning. Inshallah, you'll be able to run this website when I die. Inshallah. Inshallah. 
I mean, okay, that's Sabrina, guys. We, Asthma, you got something to say too? Go ahead, baby. Uh, is the is the new uh Sheikh Muhammad Adli uh Arabic class going to be recorded in case people miss it? Yes, it's recorded. You will find it on the YouTube playlist under uh, Beginners Arabic. So if you have to miss it, yes, you can catch up. In fact, all the stuff is there now. He goes, he, this is his fifth class. And all he went over was the alphabet. And most of y'all know the alphabet already. But he's getting ready to get to the, the hard stuff, which is the alphabet, the letters with the vowels. That's why y'all want to start joining these classes. Because uh, the easy stuff was learning Aleph Bata, which y'all know that. Yeah. But it's all recorded. Okay, guys. So did, did I do? Yeah, I did all the introductions. These are the kids that are with us today. Alhamdulillah. And we're going to kick it off now with the Hadith for tonight. And let me uh, share my little screen here. Y'all ready for it? And like I said, today I'm doing the Hadith from um, um, uh, uh, the other book. I'll start the new book with you guys, inshallah, next week. The one that you ordered already, okay? Your parents should have it because I forgot that y'all ordered it. Uh, Sister Amalia reminded me. But this is the hadith. This is based on the book uh, for Muslim, the 40 hadith for Muslim youth. This is the 40 hadith for Muslim youth. And it's a good review for us here because that's what I was going to do was review the book with you guys. But I forgot that you ordered the, the new one. So since you ordered the new one, we'll go to the new one and then go back to this one. Okay, so we're going to just speak about hadith number one from this wonderful uh, collection of Sheikh Muhammad Saeed Atlees entitled 40 Hadith for Muslim Youth. Let's take a look at the hadith. Abu Huraira. And by the way, who can tell us a little bit about Abu Huraira? Who can remember something about Abu Huraira and share with us? Let me see. Anybody want to share some information about who Abu Huraira was with us? Ahmed and Lene? Who's got their hands up? I can't see. Can't tell. Do you, oh, you know something about Abu Huraira? There they go. Uh, no, I was just going to say we saw Amalia at the zoo last weekend. Oh, you met Amalia? Yeah, at the zoo. She oh, subhanAllah, the, the kids met. A sister Amalia, you met the you met Pfizer. Oh, the Pfizer didn't tell me your she met your mom and everything. Yeah. Oh, oh do the lot. Do you so do y'all live close to, to each other? Yeah. That's good. Even, so uh, so yeah, they live far away. Yeah, but we got there in time. Oh, mashallah. That's good because when I come up there, I can meet uh, your family too, Amalia. So that's good. So when I do come, I'll be able to meet two of my students. Good. I'm so proud that y'all got to meet each other. Did you have a good time at the zoo? We, we saw a, we also saw a leopard. Yeah, le now that's my favorite. Y'all know I'm the cat woman. So I love cats. Mashallah. Look at her. You mean it's a wild cat. You there? Yeah, he's a wild one. They are those the kind of that we. Yeah, they can camouflage with their spots. Yes, they are. They camouflage. Yeah. These kids are so smart. Okay, Sabrina, can you tell us about Abu Huraira? Can she hear? Um, I think he was the best companion. He was like one of the best of them. Yes, and what and was there something else spectacular about Abu Huraira? I think I forgot. I have to ask my mom. She's an expert. <laughs> Anybody else can remember? Is Tahira, you remember about Abu Huraira? Let's see. Tahira got her hand up. Go ahead. Yes. Put that thing on your mouth. Yeah. Abu Huraira was um the um, Abu Huraira was so special because the Prophet Muhammad Wale Wasallam prayed for him and his mother to remember everything. 
Mashallah. She got something right there. Uh, one of the things that made Abu Huraira special was the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did make dua for him and his mother. And he also made dua to Allah, asking Allah to, to, to bless Abu Huraira with an excellent memory. So he remembered everything the Prophet said and did. That's why most of those hadiths are narrated by him. What was the dua he made for Abu Huraira and his mother? For his mother. Can anybody remember that one? Sabrina, you remembered? Okay, let's see. Go ahead. What was the dua he made for his mother? Do you remember that? I think it was the one where he said um, that he wanted him to remember the hadith. Right. Like, right. To, uh, and to, I think, read and write too. No, just the hadith. But what about the mother? What was the dua for his mom? Amalia, you remember? Oh, <clears throat> a lot of Muslims don't know that. He made dua asking uh, 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 not only for oh, Abu Huraira's mother to accept him as a Muslim, but for everybody to love Abu Huraira and his mother. So anybody that met Abu Huraira and his mother, they fell in love with him. And his mother accepted uh, Islam and, uh, and accepted Abu Huraira, you know, uh, as for, for his conversion and stuff too. So that's, those are two of the things that make him uh, so spectacular. So this hadith was narrated by him. In fact, most of the hadiths are narrated by Abu Huraira. So let's take a look at this one here. Inshallah, you guys can see my screen. Yeah. The pro now, Abu Huraira tells us, that the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said there are seven people who Allah will give shade to, the shade of his throne to, on the day when there will be no shade, talking about the day of judgment. And we, dis we discussed this hadith before. And those seven people are a just ruler. This is why it's so important like Sabrina was saying, for the young girls to follow the Sunnah when it's time to get married, that you let your fathers uh, look for husbands for you because your husband will be your imam, your ruler. And uh, a man will have to stand before Allah and be held accountable for how he ruled over his people. So if you are a good ruler, a good husband, a good imam, a good teacher, you know, you will be under the shade of Allah's throne. Also, another one of those people is a child who grew up worshiping Allah. Children like you guys, alhamdulillah, you guys were uh, born Muslim. All of you here were born Muslim. And alhamdulillah, your parents are raising you upon Surat al-Mustaqeem. They're raising you to be good practicing Muslims. If you stay a, a part of this religion, you continue to pray, you continue to fast, you don't deviate away and apostate, you don't become like the Kafirs, you know, and, and, and party and do drugs. If you stay upon Islam the rest of your life, you will be under the shade of Allah's throne on the day of judgment. And also a third person is a man who's, who is attached to the mosque. You look at a person like a Sheikh uh, Muhammad Saeed Atli, the one that wrote the books for you guys. Sheikh Atli stays at the mosque. He gets up, he makes Fajr, and then he goes to the mosque and he stays there until Isha. Okay, he's attached to the mosque. Because as a Muslim man, that's where the blessings are. A Muslim man gets more blessings praying in the mosque and being at the mosque than, than anywhere else. So for you young brothers, Brother Ahmed, Brother Hamza, Yusef, when you guys get older, you want to make sure you go to the mosque to pray all your prayers. You want to make sure that you spend most of your time at the mosque and not in the shopping centers and not uh, gaming, and not with girls. 
and also another person that Allah will, will uh, put under his throne are two people who meet for the sake of Allah and they love each other for the sake of Allah and they depart for the sake of Allah. This is talking about, say, for example, uh, your best friend, you know, Sister Najma, you have a person, a Muslim girl that you are friends with. You love her for the sake of Allah. You would do anything for her because she's your best friend. Okay. That means you hold no jealousy towards each other. No hatred towards each other. You see the good in her and she sees the good in you and you're there to help each other. These people will be under the throne of Allah. And also another person, this is for my handsome Hamza, a man who an extremely beautiful girl tries to get to be their boyfriend. And you tell her, no, I don't have boy girlfriends because I fear a lot. And I want all my little boys, Shuaib, Yusuf, Hamza, Ahmed. Allah blessed you all with beautiful looks, beautiful appearance, beautiful behavior, and deen. When you get older, you're going to find that those Kafir girls are going to be attracted to you. Those Kafir girls are going to be asking you, why come you don't date them? They're going to be calling you uh, uh, names and saying that, that, you, that something's wrong with you because you won't date them. But if you ignore them and hold firm to this religion because you fear a law, you'll be under the shade. And this is also for you girls. Najma, Sabrina, Amalia, those Kafir boys look at you sisters covered up and they say these girls are different. Not just because they got those beautiful Somali cheekbones, but also because they're beautiful in their appearance. They're beautiful in their behavior. And so the little Kafir boys are going to be coming to you, trying to get you to be their girlfriend, get you to be their Valentine and all that garbage. But if you tell them, no, I'm Muslim and I fear Allah, then you will be one of these people under the throne of Allah. You don't want to give in to these Kafirs. OK, and then another person that will be under the throne of Allah is a person that gives in charity. For example, you donate to the website and you conceal it. What does that mean? That means you don't brag in votes. You will make a thousand dollar donation to the website and you don't show off by saying I paid a thousand dollars. So inshallah, Allah going to bless me because I gave a thousand dollars. I paid for the website this month. If you don't boast and brag, you will be under the throne of Allah. And then the last person, this is a person who when they are alone by their self, where no one can see them, they think about Allah and how much Allah has been merciful to them and how good Allah is to them. And how much they love Allah. And then they just cry the tears out of love and compassion for Allah. So those are the seven people who will be under the shade of Allah, Allah's throne on a day of judgment. So this is a beautiful hadith that Sheikh Muhammad Saeed Atli put in his book. You know, letting us know that on the day of judgment, the sun will be brought very close to us. As we're standing on that plane, you will be very hot. You will be wishing for something to cool you off, something to protect you, you know, from that, uh, 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 that sun. So the people that Allah will protect and shade are those people who earned his love because they fell in one of those seven categories. So this is a wonderful hadith that teaches us that we need to make the right choices in this world. You know, don't succumb to your desires. Don't care what other people are doing. You have to stick to the, hold on to the rope of Allah and don't fall victim to this dunya. And ask yourself, what category do you fall in? Ask yourself, do you fall in any of those categories? Because Allah loves those who are good. 
people that can maintain being good when everybody else around them is bad. Okay. Wonderful, Hadith. One of my favorites. One of my favorites. So now what we're going to do, I want to go around and ask each and every one of you of those seven categories, <clears throat> which category do you think that you fall in? And tell us why. Which one of those seven categories? Let's start with Sabrina. Which one of those seven categories do you fall in, Sister uh, Sabrina? Um, it's probably the sixth one where where you don't go into relationships with girlfriend and boyfriend because in my in my classroom and in my school I have. I have kids who are Muslims, but only like two of them. But some, but one doesn't follow the religion good, and the other one uh, is good at it. And my classmate, most of them are just not really aware of my religion. But only like one of my classmates is really shy when he's around girls. Alhamdulillah. So exactly. So and that's the one that I strove for when I was your age. You just I said, subhanAllah, I'm a, I want to be in that category. And I was, you know, I didn't give in to that girlfriend, boyfriend crap. Yeah, go ahead. And I have I have a kid at my school. He, he just came this year. His name is Adam. He's a Muslim. And he told me that he goes to the masjid that is probably nearby us. And he um he got a he got like a card where he can do the adhan. Oh, mashallah, mashallah. That's pretty good. Alhamdulillah. Seem like y'all got a good little community over there where y'all where y'all live at. Alhamdulillah. I also live next. I also live nearby a mile yet too. I sometimes go. That's good, Masha. Look at you. These are your little sisters. Yeah. They are beautiful. All of y'all are just beautiful. May Allah bless all. Look at them. Aren't they adorable? Tell them the name of that country you from. It begins with an M. They want to know what name the people in TV land want to know what country are your parents originally from? Burundi. That's it. Marundi, guys. I can't never pronounce it. I have 1% Marundi in me. I had never heard of it before. I did my DNA test. Y'all know I got every country in Africa in me because my mother's people, the Vikings, Jean Guiton was his name. He went there uh, putting Christianity all through it. Then you know I got my father's people who were the Arabs conquering and trying to get the Islam. But I got 1% Marumbi in me. Do you speak your language too? Uh, so, yeah. Good. Yeah. Make sure you, you and your sisters learn the language. Don't let that language die, okay? Um, She knows one part and then she still needs to learn how to hear it because she's they're born. They're born um, here. Yeah, aren't they beautiful? Everybody in the TV land is saying how beautiful you are. Yeah, that's that's name. Say the name of that country again. Say it again. Maroon. Y'all hear that? That's where she's from. Yeah, I got my students are from all over Africa. I got all, all from every place. Mashallah, may Allah bless you. Okay, so that's Sabrine, guys. That's the category that she is striving for, and that's the same way I did when I was young. Hamza. Which one of those seven categories do you think you fall in or you gonna strive to fall in? Uh, the sixth one, as well. The same one where you protect yourself against the girls? Yeah, those girls be trying to talk to you now, don't they? Cause you playing soccer, they be, hey, go, go Hamza, go Hamza, go. Go look at me, ran. That's what them girls be doing. Go Hamza, go Hamza. So yeah, he he needs to be in that category where he can you know not resist those girls because he's handsome. All of y'all are handsome, and that's the category I want each and every one of y'all to strive to be in because Allah blessed all of you with intelligence and good looks, and I don't want to see any of y'all grow up and lose it because of the life of this world with these Kafirs. You hear that, Hamza? I think Israel will whoop your behind anyway. Yeah. When them girls be saying, go Hamza, you just ignore them. Okay, good job. Which category for you, Asma and Najma? 
I would also like to be in the category where I would deny that when like uh like maybe a random boy from my class would go would ask me to be their boy like their girlfriend all of that I would deny it. Yeah. I'll, Another one that I would also like to be in is the one where you have like a Muslim friend and you and you like them really much as a friend and then you will do anything for them. Yes, now y'all see it's a good category. It is. That's you should a great... all want to be in that category as well. Oh, isn't aren't they intelligent? Yeah, they're Somali. Everybody say we know they Somali. Yeah, that's they're Somali. Yep. But mashallah, and as you can see, because of the age, these kids are at that age. Where they, because the, Americans, they start in elementary school. In the fourth grade, that's when they start that boyfriend, girlfriend crap. So you can see that these kids are experiencing that, you know? So yeah, I want all of you to be in that category. And then she threw in another one where you love for the sake of Allah. This is something that kids, that Muslim adults don't do enough of. We have to learn to love each other for the sake of Allah. Yeah, and what's your category, baby? Go ahead. Um, so like category six, because me and Asma go to this daycare and there's this boy, he's, uh, we're older than him and he's talking about girl, girlfriend and boyfriend and he, he likes asking a lot of girls out. Yeah, see that? They start young, guys. This world, I'm telling you. That's he's like six years old and he's already talking about that. Yeah, six years old. This is why I'm telling y'all, check out that school, Safa USA. I'm telling you guys, we need to get these kids homeschooled. Homeschooled and that Safa USA with Kareem Abouze is all over. It's international. That way the kids don't have to be exposed to that six years old trying to be a girlfriend and boyfriend and stuff. Ain't nobody got time for that nonsense. Exactly. <laughs> okay, let's see. And now we got uh, Lene, Lene and Ahmed. Which category you th you two think you fall into? I have a question yes. that can, can people be in all categories? Yes. Alhamdulillah, some of us may fall into uh, all categories. Some of us may fall into two or three. So yes, so you want to strive to be in them all, right? Yeah. That's what I'm saying, that's good too. Try to be in as many of them as you can. You wanna be at the mosque, you wanna also remember Allah, uh, and, and when you by yourself and weep out of fear, you wanna be a person that gives in charity and nobody yeah. knows it. So yeah, you want to do all of them, and you too, Lene, huh? Yeah. Oh, look at her. She picks whatever I pick. They are, they're twins. Somebody's typing it. Yeah, they are twins. Yeah. <laughs> he does the talking, and she says, "Yeah." <laughs> I can't wait to meet these kids. Alhamdulillah. Okay, so who else we got? Shuey. Which category for you? I think I'm uh I'm I'm on uh the category I think I'm on is um uh um uh like I'm uh, not I'm uh, I'm uh ignoring girls that that um uh, that uh that try to say like I'm like like one time in my class and one time on my bus there was a girl on uh on my bus and she said like um uh, she was like she was like convincing me to like um uh to like um uh to like um uh date her like and um uh and I was like um and, and I kept on saying that that I'm Muslim I don't I I I am uh so you so you so you should stay away from me because I I only because I'm uh I got some I got some friends I got some friends they're they're boys and um uh and they they're all Muslim. Good. They, so see that also, even um, they, uh, you see these kids are, are faced with that already, guys. They start young now. The kids start at six years old. They trying to pick you up, be your boyfriend, and all that crap. We ain't got time for that crap. So that's what I'm saying, that if you can maintain your chastity, 
your integrity, your dean, until you get married, inshallah, you will fall under that category. All of you, all of you to be working on that. Taslima, you're back with us. Which one of these categories for you, Taslima? Did you get your teeth? You went to look for your teeth, huh? You found them? Yeah. Which category are you in? Okay. Um, so when time at school, there's just there's this one girl, um, and she she um she said um She's from Mali. Yeah, she's she's from Mali, y'all. Yeah, I told you they're from all over Africa here. She's not Somalian. She's from Mali. Mali, Mansa Musa territory. And she done forgot what she was going to say, huh? Look at her. <laughs> You're going to be in the category to give charity probably, Taslima, huh? Yeah, you're going to be giving charity to help the moss. You're going to probably try to pay the money to keep the moss going. I can see your, your category. So, mashallah, guys, these are all, you know, different categories that we can uh, strive for as Muslims. And I'm, uh, I, I'm not surprised to see that most of you said the same category of guarding your chastity, because this is one of the hardest things to do in America today is to guard our chastity because i'm telling you and you look at television you go to school it's all about sex is all about drugs is all about that you have to maintain your integrity and say no to all of that and it's hard because they're going to look at you like you are crazy because you're the only one that's not doing that they're going to call you names they did me i grew up in the 60s and I was Muslim. They called me the flying nun. They called me crazy. They called me all kind of stuff because I wasn't doing what they were doing. But I didn't care. It just made me stronger. And that's how you have to be strong and just, you know, who cares? I'm better than you. I used to tell them I'm better than you. I'm better than you. I don't want to be like you. You're nothing. You're a fuel for the hellfire. I'm striving for paradise. I don't want to be anything like you. I don't want to look like you. I don't want to act like you. I want to be smarter than you and better. And that's how you have to think. Okay, Sister Aisha, I see we have somebody with their hand name Aisha. You wanted to share? Go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say I probably fall in the category of not showing off like the good deeds that you do. And also, and yeah, guarding your chastity because that dating stuff is honestly disgusting. If you think about it, I mean, you don't have to think about it, but it's just disgusting. Yes, it is. And I've and seen like even kids who are like five years old, like they just entered school and they're already talking about that stuff. Yeah. And look, even old women, y'all see I'm 60 years old, 61 years old. Y'all see how I have to kick people out of here. We got men coming in here trying to get Layla Nasheba to date them. Y'all seen that? I just kicked yeah. some dude out two days ago. He came in here and said, what's your, can I get your number? I had to kick him out. I'm 61 years old. I'm an old woman. I got one foot in the grave and I'm half dead. I'm half dead. And you trying to get me to date you? I can't date you. I'm old. I ain't got no good knees. People crazy. It's Tahira, did you did you have your hand up too? Do you want what category for you, Tahira? The same one. Yes. But, um. Also, one time, um, me and my mom were driving, um, to like go get my grandpa something to eat, and um, my mom had her window down. And there was this guy next to us, and um, he was trying to talk to my mom, and then my mom just rolled the window up and started driving away. Yeah, even us old women, you know, look at us. But it's because we Muslim, because we're different, you know, because we wear hijab, because we cover our bodies, the men still want to come at you, you know, because and they, they can see in us that we're different, that we're not like the Kafir women. They look at us and see that we're better. 
because we cover our bodies. And so they want to try to tempt you. And the thing is, if you fall and give into it, they're going to leave you hanging. Once they take your virtue away, once they take your, your Ibada away, then they'll leave you and go and brag and tell everybody, I, I, I took it. So you don't want to fall into that category, guys. None of you. Where you given, you know, you let you succumb. You want to stay under the shade of Allah's throne. Mashallah. You got something else to say, Sabrina? Go ahead. Um, just like you said, like when you were little, you used to tell yourself a good positive thing. It's basically what my teacher also tells us because I tell her sometimes about my religion so she understands. So then she she's proud of me and then she she says that it's good to be different because if we were all the same it would be boring because you wouldn't learn different things from different people because we'd just be all the same. Exactly. Exactly. And, and some kids and I would go to school some days and then some kids would would feel bad. They would ask me if I celebrate Christmas, Valentine's Day or Easter or those other celebrations and I didn't tell them no and then they would feel bad for me because they they think I don't get any presents or any treats but I told them that I get presents some other days too. Exactly yeah they, and that's what I used to tell them too. I was just like you Sabrina. I would tell them don't feel bad for me because um, I get more than you do. They used to say don't you feel bad that you don't do Christmas? Don't you feel bad that you don't get presents? I said I get presents all the time from a love. I said, my Lord gives me presents. I said, I said, this world is nothing. I, I was seven, eight years old telling everybody this world is nothing. I used to tell them, I want to be like the angels. I want to be in heaven. That's what I used to say. I want to be like the angels. I don't want to be like you guys. I don't want anything here. I just want it all up there. And that's how, but because that's what my mother put in me, like your mothers are putting in you. And you have to maintain that. And I got married young too. I'm going to talk about that in another day. I got married when I was 14 years old, 15 years old. I got married young. I believe in kids getting married young. When you're ready to get married, when you're young, you I, you know, when you're ready. I was ready at 14 because I matured when I was nine. I think that's the Arabic blood in me. But I was ready to get married at 14. When you girls feel like you're ready to get married, tell your father. Yes, go ahead, Sabrina. I think I know why you did that. Huh? I think I know why you did that. Well, yeah, go ahead, tell him. Because there's a hadith where the prophet actually married Aisha at nine years old, but he had to leave her so she can grow up a little. Exactly. Yeah. Some women mature. Some girls mature faster than boy. I mean, than others. I was mature really at the age of 12. You know, I got my menses when I was nine. But by the time I was 12, I was ready to get married because I was a, I was an adult. I was mature. And so I got married young, very young. And I'm glad I did because it I never fell for that girlfriend, boyfriend crap. You know, subhanAllah, it's best. Marriage is best. Don't, if you ever feel the urge to do that type of stuff, talk to your father and your mother and get married. Inshallah. And your parents are probably, and for the parents out there, you should already have that, your children in mind. Like I said on the website here, I've had three marriages from my website. Okay. You should be looking at the other kids here. Oh, this brother is so nice. Maybe he'll be a good person for my daughter. I mean, the parents should keep in mind good kids. So when their daughters reach that age, they can say, well, we got somebody lined up for you. Yeah, so alhamdulillah. Okay, mashallah, this was a wonderful hadith. I think you guys understand it so well. So now what I want to do is transition to uh, the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. For those of you who are watching us on the internet, I cannot show the movie because of copyrights. 
So if your kids want to see this episode, they're going to have to join um, the Zoom room at soonerfollowers.net. So I'm going to close out to show the movie. The movie is only 15 minutes long, and then we'll come back on. Okay, so you guys will be able to hear the questions I have for them, inshallah. So I'm closing out, but we'll be back in in 15 minutes, inshallah. You guys did really good. Okay, let me get this movie on. Because Sheikh Atley is at four, right? So we got. Okay, alhamdulillah, mashallah. So we got to watch episode 26 of the seerah or the life of the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And uh, this uh, episode focused in on how the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam united uh, the two Arabic tribes, the Quraysh and the Ansar, and how did he unite them is by putting them together at, uh, to, to look out for one another and care for one another. And so Alhamdulillah, I have some questions now uh, from this episode that I would like to share with you guys. Give me a second here uh, to post everything up on so that other people can join us from uh, TV land. The Muslims from TV land can join us. So let's look at the questions here. Let me put my little PowerPoint up here on the screen. Episode 26. See how well you were paying attention. Uh oh, sorry. <laughs> okay, this was episode 26 of the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Let's look at the first question. Why did the Jews ask the prophet questions, the questions they were asking him? Was it uh, for him to prove that he was a prophet? Or did they ask him those questions to test his knowledge? Or did they just ask him questions because they wanted to hear his voice, to hear him speak? Which answer is correct? Anyone? Sister Asma Najma, go ahead. Why did the Jews ask the prophet the questions they did? One. Okay. For him to prove he was a prophet. Okay. Do you guys agree with her answer? She said for him to prove he was a prophet. Everybody agree? I agree. Yes. Mashallah. That was the reason why. Alhamdulillah. Hey, Jayla, I didn't know if you was coming back, but I didn't throw it away. It's on the thing. I thought you was good to work. No, I need it. That's why I, I Well, I text you. I didn't touch it. I just put it in a container. I need that oh, it's in there. I didn't do nothing. I just put it in the dishwasher. Okay. Okay, what about this? After asking the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the questions, did they determine that he was an imposter or that he was a prophet? Which one? The questioner ruled that the prophet was an imposter. In other words, that he was a fake prophet. Is that true or false? Did they determine that he was a fake prophet? True or false, Yusef? Go ahead. False. Mashallah, this is false. From the way he answered the questions, they determined that he was indeed a true prophet of Allah. He was not a fake. Good job, Yusef. Let's look at the next question. The rabbi who asked the questions, he ended up converting to Islam. Is this statement true or false? What do you guys think? Tahira. The rabbi who asked the questions to the prophet converted to Islam. Is that true or false, Tahira? Yeah. Do you guys agree? Yes. Yes, that's correct. He did convert to Islam. He became a very important companion too. What about this question? Let's look at the next one. What did the prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa do 
to establish brotherhood between the Quraysh and the Ansar? Did he match them? Did he match the immigrants to an Ansar family? Or did he have them fight it out? Or did he have them draw lots? What did he do to establish brotherhood between the two tribes? Go ahead, Yusef. Anyone else? Go ahead, Asma and Najma. Go ahead, Asma and Najma. What did he do? Hold on, hold on. Asma's answering it. Wait a minute, hold on for a second. Uh, that, that was shake at me, guys. Hold on for a second. The number one, he matched the... How do you... Yes, he matched him together. Hold on for one second, guys. Let me. That was shake at me. Let me call him back. Might be something important. Sorry. Well, alaikum salam. How are you? Oh, all right, how are you? I hope I did not disturb anything. No, I'm, I was just finished up the class, you know, for the kids. I was trying to hold them here for you. That's all. Thank you. They're doing a little quick. To, there is a video on the Facebook that you put it there on the, for the people to listen to it. Which one? Facebook, my Facebook. Did I put one on your page? No, 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 no. I, one second, let me turn this one. Amen. Okay. Right. I just finished Facebook. Oh, YouTube. Oh, okay. okay. Was it oh, you did. Oh, you should have told me. Oh, let me go on there. And you oh. not preparing for it, you understand? So somebody came to visit her. Oh, so. shake at me. And you do your best when you are uh, spontaneous. Okay, I see it. Oh, so mashallah. I appreciate if you can put it for them to hear it now, later, anything. Oh, yeah, I see it. Oh, man, you did do that. Okay, Muhammad Atley is going live dawah. Okay, yeah, I got it. I'll, I'll put you. that on there. Mashallah. Okay, good. Okay, okay. Well, they can smile, rock my tula. Okay. Okay, guys. Okay, I'm sorry. I had to, yeah, that, I got a video to put up later. Okay, let me go back to um, the questions. MashaAllah, I'm so proud of y'all on how you guys are answering these questions. So now let's go back to this. Let me screen share so y'all can see and the people on TV land can see. Uh, from current, this was the one we were on, right? Okay, so what was your answer again, sweetheart? He matched one. the what first one. Yes, he matched them up to establish a brotherhood. He matched the immigrants to the Ansar. Alhamdulillah, good job. Okay, let's look at the next question. In Medina, how did the Muslims decide to call the prayer? And this is what we're learning in my six o'clock class. So you guys will be able to answer them. How did the Muslims uh, decide to call the prayer? Did the angel Jabril tell them how to do it? Did Allah tell them how to do it? Or did a man have a dream as to how to do it? Which one, guys? Anyone? The man had a dream. Mashallah. Exactly. And I want y'all to remember that because that's what we're going to be speaking about in the six o'clock class. You know, a man had a dream. In fact, three people had a dream as to how to do it. Good job. Let's look at the next question. Oh, that was the last question. Okay. So, mashallah. Alhamdulillah. Mashallah. You guys did very, very well on this quiz. We had a wonderful time here. I want y'all to stick around. I'm not going to stop the stream because Sheikh Atley will be coming in in five minutes. He's coming in in five minutes to review the letters of the alphabet. And everybody here should know the letters of the alphabet. So what he's gonna do when he comes in is we're gonna review all the different letters of the alphabet with Sheikh Atley, okay? And then I want y'all to come to his class every day at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, okay? 
Yeah. Okay. Anybody got anything to say? 